Hello everyone. I am in Chicago at the United Center where the Coyotes are getting set to practice shortly. Uh, obviously last night they played in St. Louis and pulled out a 3-2 overtime win. Uh, flew into Chicago after the game and they have a practice day today before taking on the Blackhawks tomorrow night at the United Center. Um, so we'll see kind of what the lines look like at practice today. Who's on the ice? Obviously Derek Morris, Redding Verbata, and Martin Hansel did not play last night. Um, Morris and Verbata are dealing with lower body injuries, and Hansel has been sick. Uh, so we'll see how everyone is today, and I'll be posting updates on my Twitter account so you can follow along at azc underscore McClellan. But let's get started today with our chat and take our first question. Uh, this question is from Guest. Which Coyotes players or coaches give the best interviews? Who poses the biggest challenges and why? Um, well, obviously, I think probably one of the biggest challenges is just from the players who um, don't have English as their first language, who who have accents and um, you know are, are just learning the language sometimes even when they're here. Um, so it's not that they don't ha give intelligent and insightful answers. It's just sometimes hard to um, you know decipher what someone's saying when they have an accent or they're speaking English as their second language. But um, some of the best interviews I find um, on this current squad, um, Mike Smith is always good. I, I think he's probably considered one of the best quotes in the league, especially as a goalie who, um, you know, can be kind of closed off and reserved, but uh, he always he thinks about his answers and gives very detailed, um, descriptive answers to, to my questions, so I find he's usually a good interview. Uh, another one I, I person I really like talking to is Zabinik Mahalik. Um, obviously, uh, he speaks Czech as well, so English wasn't his first language, but um, he's another guy who I think when you ask a question really breaks it down and gives great detailed answers, and um, I think he just has a good pulse on the team, so he always really seems on point with, when you talk to him, so those are two guys who I feel um, are always kind of the go-to guys in the room. If I need a good quote and I need someone to really help my story out, I try and maybe talk to Mahalik like or Mike Smith and um, see what they have to say on the topic. Our next question is also from someone called Guest. Hey Sarah, in the past we've come to know Coyotes hockey as a defense first approach. However, it seems as if most of the games so far have been much more open with far too many turnovers and a heavy reliance on Mike Smith. Is this what we should expect for the rest of the year? Um, actually, this is kind of something that I'm going to delve into with my story um, for tomorrow's paper, so make sure to check that out on AZ Central Sports. But, um, you know, so far we've really kind of seen a different style emerge for the Coyotes and kind of the way that they've been winning. Um, you know, it's been high scoring games, it's been comebacks, it's been rallies, um, you know, really not playing with the lead and maintaining it. And, um, you know, yet they're still getting points, so it's hard to criticize what they're doing doing but they definitely don't feel like they played their best hockey yet and they'd like to get back to that defense first style that we've seen in the past those two one three two wins um, you know but I think part of it is, is just part of the roster this is a different group the personnel has changed you add in a player like Mike Rubero and we've seen just kind of the ripple effects that he's had on this offense he might not be the leading scorer but he's assisting on goals like he did last night um, on the game winner for Oliver Ekman Larson so when that dynamic changes, it affects your whole group and you see the confidence they have to come back in games. And um, so maybe they're playing a little looser because they know that, you know, the offense is there. The power play is better when they're getting those late game chances. They're capitalizing now. So I think that's this is kind of the crossroads that the Coyotes are at right now. Obviously, they're getting a little nitpicky with these wins and maybe they can afford to do that because they're banking up the points. But they want to rediscover that style that has been the staple of Dave Tippett since he's been here with the Coyotes but really maybe you know that's the question I'm going to pose to players today can they rediscover that is has there been too much change have they won too often um, you know coming from behind late third period rallies to really go back maybe they've gone too far and there's no turning back but it'll be interesting to see I, I don't think we'll see this type of hockey that we're seeing in October and November in March and April I really do think it'll get tighter as we move along and so I think that should help the Coyotes maybe snap back to their old way and really rediscover the style that has helped them become a playoff team in the past. Our next question comes from another guest. Guest is very popular today. What's the deal with Lucas Lessio? He impressed me most during camp, and I realize he had a rough first two games, but why isn't he getting a call-up? 
when guys like Brown, Swartz, and Mealy are. Uh, well, I think with uh, with Lucas Lessio, obviously he was a rookie. This was his first year pro. He was in junior last year. He had a little bit of AHL experience at the end of this year, but he is a true bona fide rookie. And I think it be, became clear early in the season that the Coyotes needed a little bit more of a veteran presence to stabilize their lineup. That's why they sent Brown and Lessio back to the AHL and called up Tim Kennedy, Brandon Yip, and made the signing of Jeff Halpern. And I think, you know, since then we've seen players get called up, like Swartz, like Neely, who, you know, maybe don't have as much experience. That was Jordan Swartz's first game when he was called up, but their their role and style is more suited to what the Coyotes needed at that time. They needed, you know, a fourth-line guy to just be steady and come in and, and stabilize their bottom lines. Maybe not be the flashiest player on the ice, but not hurt them. Just do the little things right. And I I think that's why we've seen Jordan Sports stick around. Um, he's a player that can play a fourth line role. So can Chris Brown. Whereas I think players like Mealy and Lucio maybe um, need to be higher in the lineup to have an impact. They need you know players around them who can help um, you know help them be creative offensively, which is the nature of their game. So I think a lot of it is on positional need roles. And you know I don't think this is the last we've seen of Lucas Lucio. I really think he'll be back at some point. But it isn't a bad thing I believe for him to get some seasoning, get some time in the AHL, really kind of feel comfortable with his game before bringing it back to the NHL. But credit to him for like. He's not having a great camp, making that impression. And it'll be interesting to see how his career grows um, and how it does that with the Coyotes. Okay, our next question comes from Paul Hoffman. Are there any rumors of the Coyotes looking to bring in, in another top forward via trade? Anyone specific? Um, you know, we kind of, this is probably one of the most popular questions that we get every week in our chat is who are the Coyotes looking at? Is this a need? Um, and obviously the answer is yes. They would like to add another top flight scoring winger, preferably on the left side. Um, I think it's clear that They've been looking for that piece to complement the Verbata in Hansel line for a few years now. It's still on their radar. Is anything eminent? No, I don't believe that to be the case. Um, I think as you know, we get closer to the trade deadline, it makes more sense to see something happen then. Um, but they're always looking to improve. It'll be interesting to see. Um, you know, once Don Maloney is back with the team, he was at the general manager meetings. Um, in Toronto yesterday, you know, what was the vibe, what were the conversations like? I, I think once you get everyone in the same room, chatter happens. So maybe he'll he'll have a better handle on, on what, um, you know, the trade situation is. But it's definitely a priority. It's on their radar. As we've seen in the past, the Coyotes have tended to make a trade as they're, you know, making their playoff push closer to the deadline. That's where they've, you know, fired players like Antoine Vermette in the past. So, um you know, I expect something to happen maybe this season, but I think it's a little too early, especially with the team winning. They'd like to be better, but, um, you know, it's hard to complain with the points that they're getting right now. Question from guest. Are there any rumors of the team looking for another top four to be a trade? Brad Boys, please. Um, just to piggyback off my my last comment, Brad Boys, his name has been brought up a few times in these chats by um, player by uh, viewers who seem to enjoy his style of play, but um, it'll be interesting to see who the Coyotes would target. I think contract would play a play a part in that age. You know, are they an impending free agent? Are they on a long-term deal? Um, I think they've established their core, and now it's just complementing that and flattering that and finding a player who can stick in and fit with that. But I don't think they're at the point where they're going to grab a crusty old veteran player. I think they, you know, they want to find someone that who can stick and, and grow with this team long term and um, you know perhaps then it's a younger player than a Brad Boys that would come in and fit with this group. Another comment from guest. Surprising to see the line of Joan Rivera and Moss doing so well. Are you surprised with Moss on that line and how well it's done? Um, you know, I'm not really surprised that Moss has fit with those two. Uh, I think there's natural chemistry between Joan and Rivera just because they've played together so much so far, considering they've trained in training camp together, started the season together, and they've always kind of been reverted back together. Whenever the Coyotes have tended to need a spark, um, Tibbetts went gone back to that pair, and so now they're working with Dave Moss, and I think. Moss 
Moss's style complements those that line. Obviously, Rivero is the playmaker. He has the vision. He's looking to, to make a pass to set up a play. And um, Doan and Moss play very similar games. They're big, strong bodies. They like to go up and down their wing, and they're physical. And they get in on the fork check, and they can really hold on to the puck down low when they have it. Um, so with, with them able to dig loose pucks out and they set it up to Ribeiro, they can then find the open spots and it's exactly what we saw last night on Moss's goal against the Blues. Um, you know, He sets up in front of the net, Ribeiro finds him with the pass from behind it and he has the time and space to really set up the shot that he wants and it was a good one. So I, I think this is a line that for now we'll see stick together because it just seems like their styles are meshing well together and they're finding ways to be productive and when you have something that works um, like the old adage says don't fix what isn't broken. Okay, this will be our last question for today. It's from Tim G. Do you see Jordan Swartz getting sent back to Portland? After a good start, he's been a bit of a disappointment lately. And I was kind of curious actually to see, um, to hear rather, Tippett's comments after the game. And I wondered if he was talking about a player like Jordan Swartz. Um, because Tippett said, you know, with some injuries, um, you know, it was an opportunity for other players to get more playing time, more opportunity in a big stage game like that was last night against the Blues, when they usually wouldn't get that opportunity in those types of games. And um, you know, he said it was an opportunity for players to, to show that they're good NHL players. And so I interpret that as him saying, you know, maybe something to these younger guys who are looking to establish themselves at this level. Um, but otherwise, you know, I, I think they've been impressed with him. I actually talked to Dave Tippett about Jordan a few days ago and he said he's done well. He's he's kept his game simple and strong and he's done the little things right. He's really fit into a fourth line role which you want. And he said they were actually thinking about getting him some penalty kill time um, because that's something he's done in the past and they figured he could do that here for them. But um, it'll be interesting to see. I, I think, you know, by them keeping him over Mealy, it says that he's doing something right. They're happy with um, the role that he's playing. But, you know, as we're seeing as you get into these heavy, tight games against some of the premier teams in the conference, um, you know, you need to bring your best every night and, and we'll see if he can bridge that gap. But, um, you know, I I think it's you know too difficult to predict that he'll be here all season. Maybe we'll see him up again, down again. Right now he's still with the team and you know until maybe the Coyotes get back healthy and have different options, we'll see. But um, you know, for now he, he's just gotta play that consistent role on the fourth line and do the little things right, um, you know, to, to stay with the Coyotes. Um, so that's all the time we have today for the chat. Like I said, the Coyotes are about to take uh, get on the ice here shortly at the United Center for practice. I'll have updates on that on my Twitter feed at AZC underscore McClellan. And also make sure to follow our brand Twitter account, AZC Sports, um, for all the Coyotes news stories. Um, that's where you can kind of catch up on the stories from last night, the overtime win, and some notes from the day. So we will see you back here next Wednesday. Thanks so much. Thank <laughs> you.